Good morning, 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 everybody. I hope everybody's day is off to a great start. I'm thankful to be in the land of the living this morning. I'm thankful to be amongst the living this morning. I'm thankful that God woke me up this morning and gave me another chance. So for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Grace Amber. I come on different platforms whenever God gives me a word to share. I come on and I share it with you. So really quick this morning, happy Wednesday. I want to talk to you really quick this morning from the topic of the snare of offense, the snare of offense. What am I talking about today? Let's jump in. So, um, uh, there's a term that people use to describe uh, attacks, spiritual attacks, and they'll call it warfare. Or they'll just call it spiritual attacks, right? And oftentimes, once you come under attack spiritually, right, you begin to wonder, why is this happening? Why am I under attack? Why am I being targeted? Why is all hell breaking loose? Home, on the job, in your relationships, in your business. Why is all hell breaking loose? Many of us, after we come under attack, we want to know why. Um, and, and here's why. Because Satan studies us, right? And so he understands what gets to us and what doesn't get to us. Let me give you that in scripture, the very popular book of Job in the Bible. Turn with me in your Bibles to Job, uh, the first chapter, verses 6 to 11. One day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them. The Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord from roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Does Job fear God for nothing, Satan replied. Have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? You have blessed the work of his hands so that his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. But now stretch out your hand and strike everything he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. So as you can see, uh, when Satan came along with the angels to, in the courts of heaven to talk to God, right? Uh, when he came, he was already very knowledgeable about Job, very knowledgeable about Job's circumstances, very knowledgeable about everything that pertained to Job. He already knew about Job. He knew that God had a hedge fence of protection around Job. He was very knowledgeable. And that tells us that Satan watches us. He knows about us. He knows what we like and what we don't like. And oftentimes he is unable to get to us, right? Because God has a hedge fence of protection around us, just like he did Job. The Bible said that Job was upright upright, righteous, and shunned evil. So, so long as Job was upright and righteous and shunned evil, God had a hedge fence of protection around him, right? And so many of us, God has a hedge fence of protection around us. And Satan understands that there is not much he can do. There's actually nothing he can do so long as God has this hedge fence of protection around us. So, Satan understands that if he can't do certain things to us and if he can't get to us directly because of this hedge fence, he then tries to get us to self-sabotage. And in doing that, we get out of right standing with God and the kingdom of God. And guess what happens to that hedge fence of protection? It now comes down because we have become unrighteous. So how does Satan love to get us to become unrighteous? Many of us are advanced in this walk with God. And so we can turn down sexual promiscuity. We can turn down sexual immorality. We can turn down partying and drinking. We can turn down uh, uh, fighting and, and opportunities to fight. We can turn those things down because many of us have grown and matured far beyond that, right? And so Satan understands that he just can't present you with a woman late late in the midnight hour and you're just going to succumb to the pressure. He can't just present you with a nice looking young man, tall and muscular, late in the midnight hour and you're just going to give in. He understands that he can't get one of your old enemies to message you to pick a fight with you and you just going to actually fall for it and engage in, in verbal and physical combat with these people. He understands that you're beyond that. And so his next strategy for those of us who are advanced in this walk with God and advanced in a righteous lifestyle, he understands that there is something that he can do to get us to self-sabotage. He can get somebody else to do something to us and he can get them to do something to us so bad 
that we will become so enraged, angered, and infuriated that guess what will come in our hearts? Now you have bitterness. Now you have malice. Now you have anger. And most importantly, you have unforgiveness. And so many of us are looking and saying, why is this happening to me? I'm being nice to these people. And the people who I'm being nice to, they treat me like dirt. The people who I am being professional and nice to, these are the ones who are coming to me and, and doing not just little offensive things. So what if you don't hold the door for me? My hands work. I can hold the door for myself. So what if you don't speak to me and say good morning? Because truth of the matter is, I don't even want to look at you and say good morning to you, but I know how to be courteous. No, Satan gets in these people and he has them to do things that warrants a, a, a strong nasty response from you and he will continue to get people to do these things the goal is to get you so pissed off the goal is to get you so angered the goal is to get you so infuriated that now bitterness anger malice and unforgiveness has crept into your heart there are seeds of unforgiveness anger malice hatred being planted in your heart, and he understands that if he can get that in your heart, you will then become unrighteous out of right standing with God in the kingdom of God. And guess what's going to happen to that hedge fence of protection? It's going to come down because you are no longer walking in the will of God. I come today to tell you it's no coincidence. It's no coincidence that people are doing things to you that 10 years ago you'd have jumped on them and beat the brakes off of them. It's no coincidence that people are doing things to you that 10 Ten years ago, you'd have put a custom on them. You'd have ripped them so bad with their words that they probably would go somewhere, sit in a corner and cry. It's no coincidence that you with your new changed self keep having these people come and they are offending you. And not only are they offending you, with they're not, it's not minor tasks. It's things that you know that with your old self warrants a whooping, warrants a very nasty, ugly, unrighteous response. And when you don't give it to them at that time, what happens is if you're not careful, bitterness, malice, hatred, and envy, unforgiveness, all of these things will now begin to give fruition in your heart. It will get you out of right standing with God and the kingdom of God. And that hedge fence of protection will come down on your life. And Satan knows then that it's game on and you are fair game. Let me give you some scripture about unforgiveness because the goal of a significant offense something that you cannot forgive that's the goal the goal is when he gives you this significant offense things people do things to you that are so horrible that it is hard to forgive the goal is to get at your unforgiveness in your heart the goal is to plant unforgiveness in your heart and here's why Matthew 5 22 through 24 but I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment again anyone who says to a brother or sister raka which means fool you foolish you an idiot you stupid is answerable to the court and anyone who says you fool will be in danger of the fire of hell therefore if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you leave your gift there in front of the altar first go and be reconciled to them then come and offer your gift so when this unforgiveness creeps in guess what you can fast you can pray god don't want to hear it until you forgive your brother so all this fasting and all this praying that you're doing satan understands that if he can get unforgiveness in your heart all your fasting and praying will be null and void and it will be unsuccessful it will be rendered useless until you forgive let me give you another scripture the lord's prayer matthew 6 12 through 15 and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen for if ye forgive men their trespasses your heavenly father will also forgive you but if ye forgive not men their trespasses neither will your father forgive your trespasses so satan understands that if he can get unforgiveness in your heart then as you sin on a daily basis because none of us are perfect and many of us commit sin that we don't even realize it so as we see it every day satan understands that if we don't forgive other people guess what god ain't gonna forgive us 
Here's the last scripture I'm going to give you today. Galatians 5, 19 through 21. It talks about the acts of the flesh. The acts of the flesh are obvious sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you as I did before that those who live like this would not inherit the kingdom of God. Satan wants to get jealousy, hatred, discord, Fits of rage, selfish ambitions. He wants unforgiveness. He wants to get this all in your heart because it's going to disqualify you from inheriting the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. It's no coincidence that these people are coming and offending you. Do not fall into the snare of offense. Forgive. Separate yourself now. <laughs> Separate yourself if you can. Forgive and move on so that you don't disqualify yourself from the kingdom of God and so that you don't cause yourself to be unrighteous and cause the hedge fence of protection that God has around you to come down. I love you. I hope that word blessed you today. Happy Wednesday. I am Grace Amber. I'll be right back on tomorrow with another word. Good Lord willing.